Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Angela, and today we're gonna to be talking about the best books of 2022. Now, these books aren't all new releases, but they are all books that I felt strongly about. These are books that I picked up on a whim this year. I read for the first time, and I just knew were gonna be some of the best books that I've ever read. I hope you find some new recommendations amongst them. As usual, I've split this list into genre-based categories, and I'll be sharing the best books from each category. Mena Wads Bunny is a love it or hate it title and clearly since I'm talking about it I fell into camp love it. Samantha is an MFA student at this very selective liberal arts university in New England. One day she gets an invitation for an exclusive writing workshop. If we can call it that it's a loose description and this workshop is run by a clique of girls who call themselves bunnies. As Samantha is pulled into this group you start to get a deliciously dark grasp on the satire that runs true bunny. Bunny is not comical per se, it has more of a murky fairy tale vibe, but there's something about Mona Wad's writing that just left me hungry to finish this book. Mona Wad's storytelling and framing and writing is just crazy clever and Bunny has this light amount of creepiness. There are moments that did freak me out and leave my arms tingling. The scariness doesn't come from like these blatant horror elements or like jump scares but just this really weird juxtaposition of traits amongst the bunnies themselves. I'm not an MFA student, I don't have an MFA but I think if you've ever been to a writing workshop or even just watched Jane the Virgin, a lot of the main themes feel more blatant and graspable. Hands down this is one of my new all-time favorite books. I really want to reread it next year. It completely cracked open my brain. It blew my mind. I just stared at a wall for an hour after reading this book. It's a very trippy, weird ride of a story and I loved it so much. Another book I loved is this short story collection. It's Sabrina and Karina. Kali Fajardo Unstein is such a talented short story writer. One of the things that I really struggle with when it comes to short stories is accepting that a story is finished, that it's over, because I'm left wanting more from each story. And with this short story collection, which is centered around the struggles of Latina indigenous women in Colorado, I wanted more, not from each story, but just more stories overall. Sabrina and Karina is such a strong debut collection. Holly Fajardo and Sin is able to express so much in so little space. The book is quick to read. It's very intimate, very well written. Honestly, this is some of the best writing I came across this year. There are also lots of themes explored in depth and with nuance. Family, homelands, absence, identity, violence against women. And while it was very difficult to read at times, I think part of the reason why these themes were able to be woven in so fluidly and so unjarringly is just the characterization that existed throughout this collection. The women presented in Sabrina and Karina felt fleshed out, they felt real and authentic, and they were some of their surroundings and the generations who came before. Each tale had a very clear direction. Sabrina and Karina didn't feel tangled or motionless. It felt cohesive, which is one of the reasons I loved this collection so much. Best classic I read this year, Gabrielle Garcia Marquez's Chronicle of a Death Foretold. This is a tiny book. It is barely over 100 pages. Santiago Nazar is murdered, and that is not a spoiler at all because you know he's gonna die from the very first line. In fact, you even find out who killed him very quickly. This story isn't about the who, it's about the why, and the why is explored by a man who goes back to the town where the murder took place about 20 something years after that murder took place. It's written in very kind of this journalistic tone. It feels investigative, but unattached. I'm not landing on the right words to describe it, but there's something about the way that it's written that makes it even more compelling. It doesn't feel like a story with an agenda. Chronicle of a Death Foretold doesn't tell you how to feel. It doesn't tell you what to think. And yet, at the same time, the unraveling of why Santiago Nazar was murdered, and people knew, by the way, and no one warned him, Just it just presented these larger societal issues and let them naturally float to the forefront of the story. I really want to reread this book and this time annotate it. I will not stop talking about If They Come For Us. I've probably talked about this poetry collection to death already, but I will not stop. I picked up this collection from Libe Lula over a year ago and I knew when I read it that it would be my favorite poetry collection of the year. 
And it was. If They Come For Us is about the India-Pakistan partition. It's a poetic rendition of Fatima Asghar's experiences as a young brown Pakistani Muslim woman in the United States. It's a multi-generational exploration of belonging and identity, struggling with your own, finding your own, coming into your own. It talks about being an immigrant in the United States. It talks about sexuality, Islamophobia. It is at times incredibly hard to read because it is so piercing, so raw, so vulnerable. The collection has a bite to it. It's experimental in a way that just really worked well for my reading taste and I love it so much and I probably will never stop talking about this book. Let's talk about Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This book, uh, I can't discuss it without feeling angry. Chanel Miller was sexually assaulted by Brock Turner at Stanford. And when the story was being covered, a lot of the focus was on how Turner was a champion swimmer or whatever he was. Instead of the fact that Miller was literally found by a dumpster, unconscious, and had been the victim of sexual assault. Miller is so brave and courageous for sharing her story because it's so traumatizing. Know My Name is incredibly frustrating to read because the trauma Miller faced was amplified because there weren't on-campus systems in place to help her or support her after she had been attacked. She had to be driven out like multiple miles to a hospital. The legal system was also leaning towards Turner. There were these disgusting tone deaf things that were said during the trial. And the way that the perpetrator was given sympathy and empathy and Miller wasn't, it was just, this book made me really angry. Chanel Miller had her own goals and dreams. And this book is so much more than the incident that happened. It's about the aftermath of the rape, what Chanel Miller went through physically, emotionally, mentally, and her struggle to reclaim any sense of normalcy. It was powerfully written and so impactful and so purposeful. I just, this was without a doubt the best memoir objectively that I read this year. One of the most devastating, heart-wrenching, had me in tears at 3 a.m. in the morning books I've ever read is All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. This is the story of Salah Houdin and Noor, two star-crossed souls struggling with the harsh hands they've been dealt. All My Rage is a balancing act of hope and hopelessness. It dwells on friendship, anger, grief, growing up too soon, and that stupidly hard to achieve American dream. Sabatier's prose is sharp and stabbing. It pricked me. It left me dizzy and disoriented and reeling. And the setting, the fictional setting of Juniper, a spit of the Mojave Desert, just amplified the rawness, the harshness, the loneliness and weariness of desert town life. This is an absolutely beautiful book. It is one of my favorite YA books now of all time and one of the best YA books I've just ever read. My favorite fantasy this year was Nevermore, a middle grade that I loved because it reminded me so much of the story I enjoyed as a kid. Morgan Crow is a cursed child. She was born on Eventide, which is a really bad day for a kid to be born, so she's blamed for a lot of the negative events that happen in town. From the town's perspective, everything is Morgan's fault. She is fated to die on her next birthday, which is part of the curse aspect of the story, but a man named Jupiter North takes her away to the world of Nevermore and she has to go through a series of trials to make it into the wondrous society. This is just so wonderful, so feel good. So many of the characters, especially Jupiter, are just so charming. I think if you're looking for a book that feels like the Harry Potter series, I think that Jessica Townsend definitely pulled a lot of inspiration from Harry Potter and the Hunger Games, but isn't either the Harry Potter or the Hunger Games. It's definitely its own novel and it stands on its own. I would recommend this book because it's just youthful and fun and lighthearted it's just a good time and it's very nostalgic and that's one of the reasons I loved it so much. Like a lot of people, I binged Heartstopper this year. It's a queer, wholesome romance of Nick and Charlie. It's just a good series to escape into. One thing that surprised me is that as the series progressed, there are more portrayals of mental health struggles. Given where the series started, I wasn't expecting that and I'm glad the portrayals were done with so much tenderness and care and love for the characters. I still feel like overall, this series, even though it definitely had its darker moments, still maintains a lovely upward trajectory. It's just a very buoyant series to spend a day getting lost in and catching up on. It's available for free on Webtoon, which is where I read it. I just loved it. It was so wholesome and heartwarming. And I love Nick and Charlie and all of the other characters in Alice Oseman's universe. I read a lot of really good nonfiction books this year and I didn't have a clear favorite. I struggled to come up with just one. So I'm gonna preface this by saying this is the 
book that I resonated with the most. It's probably the book that is going to stay with me the longest and that's why I chose it. Ace by Angela Chen's tagline, what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex, very clearly describes the objective of this book. It's a short book but quite nuanced for the length that it is. It covers asexuality from different perspectives. It doesn't try to neatly define asexuality at all, but it definitely gives you an idea of how wide and diverse the ace spectrum is. And I really appreciated how it separated romantic love from sexual attractions. Those are two different things, and a person can experience one or the other, but they are not interchangeable terms. Regardless of whether you identify as ace or not, I think this is an important book to read because it showcases a lot of larger societal hypocrisies through the lens of asexuality. The last book that I want to talk about is The Best Romance, and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I liked Emily Henry's writing style. It felt strong, authoritative. It gave me Sophie Kinsella vibes without the humor and slightly crazed tone of voice, but it did work really well for my personal reading taste. Poppy and Alex take a vacation every year. Poppy has itchy feet. She likes to go places, explore new things. Alex is more of a stay-at-home kind of guy, stick to his comfort zone kind of guy. He's not as adventurous as Poppy is. And they are best friends despite this. They have been for a long time. For a reason I'm not gonna reveal, their friendship falls apart. And this is a story of them finding their way back to each other as friends and more than friends. There are flashbacks to different trips interspersed throughout. I loved how much Poppy and Alex's story was rooted in friendship. Poppy and Alex had their own inside jokes, their own style of banter, and I felt like a third wheel outsider while reading it in, in a good way. I'll be honest, I was hoping the people we meet on vacation would be about different people Poppy met on vacation, and it's not. I mean, I felt immersed in the summer trips, but not in the way that I expected. I felt like I could see Poppy's mind and thoughts and guard slowly being broken down trip by trip but I didn't feel like I was traveling through the cities mentioned. I would have loved detailed, I feel like I'm there descriptions, but I just really appreciated the way Emily Henry chose to structure the novel. It made for more compelling romance and I loved her overall writing style. So hands down, this is the best romance that I read this year. Those are my picks for the best books of 2022. Let me know what your favorite books of the year were. I love getting new recommendations. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.